Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So in this video, we're going to be looking at this big beastie, the German Tier 9 heavy tank, the E75. Why am I looking at this one? Well, to be honest with you, my lad Georgie has been grinding this one, and uh, well, he's, he's actually grinded it, and he's now onto the E100. And that sort of said to me why don't i go back and re-look at this tank you know it's always interesting when you see newer players playing these tanks so that's what i did i jumped back into the e75 and i decided to roll out in it and see what the tank was all about and you know what it's one of those tanks that you kind of forget about and the thing is it's absolutely brilliant it's a great tank to play i loved it but let's have a look at some replays and we'll talk over all the stats of the tank during the replays and see what is what, what is so good about the E75 and why is it one of those tanks that you really should dust off every now and then and have a good roll out in it. Here we go, rolling out in the E75 here on Normandy. It's in a supremacy game. Now the thing is, you're coming off the back of tier eight, namely the Tiger II. And the Tiger II is a really, really strong tank. It's got a great gun, it's got good damage, great armor, and everybody knows it's pretty, pretty solid all round. Now the E75 is slightly different. Yes, it's the next tank up from the Tiger II, but when you compare it to all the other tanks in the heavy line, with the exception of the auto loaders in, in tier nine, it doesn't look good. The DPM is the worst. I mean, this only has 2000 DPM. Take that you know take the likes of the type 68 which has 2300 or the conquer at 2500 or even the is8 at 2600 the dpm on this tank is pretty bad its penetration is not that great it's the same as the type 68 but it and it's it's slightly better than that of the wz111 model 4 but at only 263 it's not that great. I mean, it's being outclassed by the likes of the IS-8 with 271 pen. It's got a pretty disastrous rate of fire at 4.57 rounds a minute. All the rest are churning out almost six. Well, some of them are churning out almost six. The rest are churning out over six. It's got a pretty shockingly bad reload at 13.15 seconds. All the other heavies you know, I'm talking Type 68, Conqueror, M103, ST1, IS8, and the WZ11-4. They've all got like 10 seconds of reload time, some even lower. But the thing is this. This has pretty stonkingly good alpha damage, 460. Okay, that's the same as the WZ, but it's better than all the others. 460 alpha damage goes a long way. Ah, but it hasn't got the best shower velocity, doesn't have the best aim time, doesn't have the best dispersion. Got pretty decent gun depression, however, 8 degrees. That is better than all the other heavies, with the exception of the M103. That's right, this is better, <laughs> primarily, than the Conqueror. The speed, it's pretty, pretty nippy. 40 kilometers an hour okay that's the same as the type 68 but it's better than the conqueror and it's better than the 103 and it's better than the st1 but it's not as good as the is8 the thing you've got to remember camo profile pretty bad actually it's the worst on all of them but it's saving grace is that frontal armor well the armor full stop on the turret it has 275 millimeters frontally 175 on the sides, 175 on the rear. That outshines anything in the heavy line in tier 9. On the hull, 173 on the front, 130 on the sides and on the rear. I mean, in real terms, the only tanks that beat it is that of the M103, which has much better frontal hull armor, or the ST1, which has much better side armor. However, the thing about German tanks, especially these type of German tanks, you have to be careful anyway of that bottom plate. They are thin, and they also have the engine, so the chances of getting an engine fire are pretty slim. That's why you have eight degrees of gun depression. Stick it behind the hill. I personally like the E75. Once you understand its weaknesses, you can play it to its strengths whilst protecting it nicely. I mean, we did 3,853 there, it's a tier 10 game, we get a nice mastery, we took four kills, I'm happy with that game. 
that goes to show what the E75 is more than capable of doing. So it's not as bad as people think. So this is my good buddy EHXD of the clan Pog rolling out an ears E75 here on Canyon. Now I have to apologize, this one's a bit of a glitchy replay. Um, that's just the file that came down from Wargaming. It, it is very glitchy. But I needed to show this replay because it really shows what the E75 is capable of doing. Now, admittedly, it is in a tier 9, tier 8 battle where the last replay we were in a tier 10, tier 9 battle. But the E75 can handle tier 10s. We saw that in the previous replay. And when you're up against those tier 8s, wow, this thing really sits in a comfortable corner and is like got a big grin all over its face. I like the E75. As I said, well, that's a bad shot. <laughs> it's got a pretty accurate gun. It's got very good armor. Okay, it's got a very long reload. But if you are like me, you won't be playing this one with calibrated shells. You'll be running it with that supercharge to get that DPM better to get that reload down and much quicker and look at the i mean this poor old skoda t27 these m5s are just gonna ram him to bejesus and then just blast him into the kingdom come penetration as i said it's not the best but it's not the worst you can get away with its penetration to be honest with you you don't need the calibrated shells at least i don't think you do but that's a personal choice and you can always check out my video on equipment to have a look at that it's slow, it's sluggish, and there's the glitch as I was telling you. It's slow, it's sluggish, it's got a long reload, and a lot of people don't like the E75. They think it's a bit of a meh tank, especially in the tier 9 outline, especially when you've got tanks like the IS-8, uh, or the, even the Type 68. A lot of people like the IS-8, especially since it got sort of tinkered with. But the thing is, the E75 is a good tank. It is completely underestimated. A lot of people were sitting there thinking, ah, oh, it's not a great tank, it's very difficult to get on with. But because of its armor profile, it's actually relatively noob friendly. And it's a good way to teach players how to play the E100. Because you need to turn that turret. You can see here that uh, EHXD is turning the turret away before he gets that shot in. He's trying to narrow the angle down on those cheeks. And that's how you play this tank, pretty much like you play an E100. And it's hardly surprising because the next tank is the E100. And, you know, Georgie, my lad, has now got the E100. And he said, I'm so glad I played so many games in the E75 because it really prepared me for the E100. And a lot of players misunderstand that. A lot of players don't appreciate the grind to an extent. The thing about the E75 is, you can't just rush headlong. You've got to know how to play it. You've got to know its strengths and you've got to know its weaknesses. And in the first instance, you've got to play it to its weaknesses. And that's exactly what EHXD is doing here. He's playing the tank to the weaknesses of the tank. And look at this, he's already at 5.4K. He's taken five kills. He's got uh, one more tank out there to deal with. And he's got two more teammates. He gives him a little tap. And because of its armor profile, he's able to get a good smack. Just shy of 6K in this game. I mean, that is a great rollout. And it shows you exactly what the E75 can do. 5,893 dished out. Damage 7, destroyed 6. Got a mastery and a well-deserved mastery at that. And that's what the E75 is capable of doing in the right hands when you know how to play it. And it's a fantastic tank. So don't write this one off straight away. And if you're like me, go back and revisit some of these tanks because you, you'll be surprised at how much fun they can actually be. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the E75, the German Tier 9 Heavy. By all means, comment and everything below. Give me your thoughts on this tank. Because I like it. It's an underestimated tank. A lot of people sort of dismiss it in favor of things like the IS-8. But maybe, just maybe, it's one of those tanks that you may want to look at again. Anyway, until the next time, guys, remember, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, it really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.